We're flying the Cessna 152 Aerobat today, which has a somewhat rare instrument which can tell us the g-force, sometimes referred to as load factor, we're experiencing in the aircraft. You've probably seen load factors expressed in a chart like this, showing the relationship between bank angle, load factor, and stall speed. In the Aerobat, we'll be able to visualize all three of these things. First, we're starting out in straight and level flight. Our load factor is 1. We're feeling the same load as gravity acts upon us when we're at rest on the ground. In straight and level flight, forces balance out. The weight of the aircraft is countered by the lift generated. In a turn, the wings bank, deflecting lift to the side and moving the aircraft that way. We're robbing the vertical component of lift by doing so. With the same lift generated at the same angle of attack, the aircraft won't hold altitude. We need to increase angle of attack in order to increase overall lift to the point where the vertical component of lift once again equals and counters the weight of the aircraft. The more we bank, the more we increase angle of attack. What does this have to do with load factor and stall speed? Let's visualize it in the aerobat. From straight and level, we're going to pull back on the stick, keeping the wings level, and we see a jump in g-force. This is called loading up the wings. We're making the wings produce lift for an aircraft more than twice our weight. So that's how heavy we feel. We've done that by increasing the angle of attack. We know that the aircraft stalls at the same angle of attack no matter what. So if we're already at a slow airspeed, requiring a high angle of attack just to maintain altitude, and then pull back, increasing the angle of attack more, we just don't have as much airspeed to trade off before we hit the critical angle and stall. The stall speed is higher at a higher load factor. So no matter how we increase load factor by pulling up in wings level or trying to hold altitude with bank, we're increasing stall speed at the same time. This is how we plot out how changes in bank angle affect changes in the stall speed expressed as percentage increase and the changes in load factor. Holding altitude in a 90 degree turn brings load factors up towards infinite with some, without some crazy thrust and control services like on a fighter jet. So let's just zoom in on this part of the chart. We see what happens at different bank angles. Here we are at 30 degrees. And this is what that looks like in the aerobat and reading the g-force off the accelerometer. Here we are at 45 degrees. We require more back pressure to hold altitude and load factor and stall speed go up. At 60 degrees, we're at 2 g's. The stall speed has increased about 40%. In fact, the formula is to take the square root of the load factor, which is about 1.41, and multiply that by the 1 g stall speed to get our increased stall speed. If we pull power idle and hold altitude, we'll hit that critical angle of attack and enter a stall spin well above VSO or VS1. Sometimes visualizing concepts like load factor, stall speed, angle of attack, and bank angle can drive the points home better. For more insights, check out Flight Insight at the link here or in the description today.